So if someone asked me to give them an example of what it means to have good um, character when it comes to this ambassador model. So you know at Standard Reason we talk about the importance of being an ambassador for Jesus Christ, something that Apostle Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 5.20. And we say, to be an effective ambassador you need three things, knowledge, wisdom, and character. And on that third part, character, which we describe as having an attractive manner, uh, sometimes people are not sure what we mean by that or what that looks like. And by character, what we don't mean is that we think Christians should be uh, people of their word or should be honest or you know not lie, which of course those are all true. Of course Christians should be all those things and, and avoid you know lying and so on and so forth. But by character we mean conversational character. In other words, the manner in which we communicate with other people when we're engaging them about religion should be warm and friendly and kind and gracious and inviting. And so, uh, but, but let me kind of give you an example of what that looks like. One time I was invited to um, an event, and uh, before the event I was at the host's home. And uh, they actually happened to have a couple of friends over. And so uh, we were just chatting with some people. I didn't know these people. And one of the people asked me, so what do you do? Now, whenever somebody asks me what I do, I realize that this, this question could uh, be interesting or, uh, or unexciting for the person who's asking this. Because I, I explain to them what I do. And some people are, um, let's just say, not too thrilled about my answer when I start talking about apologetics and, and the role of being a Christian and, and defending the faith. But nevertheless, this, this conversation went okay. Uh, but here's what happened. He said, oh, well, this is interesting. He goes, what do you think about Islam? I said, well, I'm glad you asked. Actually, I talk a lot about Islam. And so we started talking about that, and they said something about the, the question of whether Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Now, I basically gave my answer, and, and in a nutshell, I said, I don't think Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Now, he was not too pleased with that, and so he asked me why I thought so. And so then I just kind of gave a, a simple answer about how uh, in Christianity, God, Yahweh, is Trinitarian, whereas in Islam, Allah is a Unitarian God. Now, he didn't find that very convincing. He still thought that maybe, you know, we don't know too much about God, so how can we possibly know um, that these are really two different gods? So I said, well, let me, let me try to answer your question another way. I said, imagine right now in this room, when we were in the living room, I said, what if Jesus appeared before us right now? I said, I, as a Christian, would worship that person standing in the room as God. However, if there was a Muslim in the room, that Muslim would not worship that person standing in that room as God. You see, I, as a Christian, would worship Jesus as God, but no Muslim on the planet would worship that man Jesus as God. So therefore, Christians and Muslims don't worship the same God. Now, at this point in the conversation, he paused, and he started to smile. And he said, hmm... Yeah, that's interesting. I, I have to think about that. Now, at this point of the conversation, I realized that this person felt the force of my point. And even though he didn't say, yeah, you're right, I guess Muslims and Christians don't worship the same God, I still took that, hmm, I see your point, as a small concession. Now, at that point in the conversation, I could have realized, oh, man, I got him cornered. Let me go in for the kill. I know I, I taste the blood in the waters. But I didn't. I realized that that small concession was enough. And instead of kind of hammering him harder and going after more and more and pressing my point, I let it go. I just slowly and gently changed the subject slightly and so to allow him to sort of save face, if you will. I didn't want to make him feel like I had cornered him and, uh, you know, this is the way Christians are, that as soon as they feel like they've made a point, they're going to keep going and pressing harder and harder. Because I felt like, man, that's the way an ambassador would act. I, they would act with conversational character. They would allow that conversation to not be this aggressive attack, but rather, hey, let me give them something to think about. Let me put a stone in their shoe and uh, have them kind of think about that, even though perhaps he was feeling the force of my point. I didn't feel like, man, I had to go all the way and convince him and get a confession out of him. So that, I feel, is an example of one way in which I've tried to incorporate um, character as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Realizing that sometimes people will, will concede your point. They may not come out right directly and acknowledge that. But if you've made a contribution, if you've put a stone in their shoe and you sense that, there's no need to continue to hammer them on that issue. And I believe that will help you to have conversational character in your conversations. And I think that's a good example 
of what that might look like.